So the other day I was playing Gotham Knights with Robin and I was using the photo mode to kind of mess around. I was just trying to take a picture of Robin grappling and moving. And as I stopped the, you know, the gameplay sequence to take that shot, something kind of struck me. And that was, hold on, this character looks like they are pretty much in a flying state. The way they design the grapple mechanics kind of almost resonate with the character in some kind of a flying, me you know, mechanism. I mean, if you juxtapose a picture of a very certain superhero upon this slowly and carefully, you see exactly what it is. <laughs> You're seeing it, aren't you? Yeah, I know. I know, right? I saw it too. And I started to think to myself, from a game mechanic perspective, what has Warner Brothers Montreal been able to create? What have they been able to put together? Where are the strong points? The internet today would judge an entire video game by throwing the baby and the bathwater out. They never can redeem anything about a game they don't like, for the most part. There are people who make the nuances, but most of the time, me and the people who just generalize, we argue all the time on the internet. But today we're looking at, say, some of those layers. We're looking at some of the different aspects to kind of see where I think a studio like Warner Brothers Montreal might be able to adapt a Superman game because David Zaslav has just pretty much teased one in one of the earnings call meetings. Now, they were working or rumored to have been working on a Superman game. Actually, some developers who worked on Gotham Knights confirmed on one of my videos from back in the day that this was actually the case, but they collapsed that project in order for them to be able to go ahead and make Gotham Knights. Gotham Knights was a mandated project. I think it was supposed to be somewhat, you know, a live service or a hybrid or whatever, but performance issues and technical limitations just put it where it is as kind of a single player hybrid. That's why we didn't get the full fledged Avengers ish kind of the game but when you think about that and you think about mechanics side and you think about potential history with this character i think there is something to be said as to why i think Warner brothers montreal has the capability and is more than likely on this particular track making this game or a game surrounding superman the talk is that james gunn is probably going to be spearheading the projects that will cohesively work together with the movies and some other products. And then this game is supposed to kind of tie in. So we're going to focus on the game. We're going to focus on some of Warner Brothers Montreal's strengths that makes me believe that this is the case. Now, when you think about Gotham Knights, it is Warner Brothers Games Montreal's very first independent IP. The other titles or projects they have worked on are Batman Arkham Origins, which was a game that was built from the foundations of Arkham based on code, assets, and so on and so forth. This was actually attested to by Ben Mattis, who was the studio's director at the time, and also the DLCs that accompanied Batman Arkham Knight. Daddy, how did this all kick off? Sure. Well, it was a uh, it was a great start, right? Um, you know, uh, Rocksteady gave us uh, all of the code, all of the assets. We inherited everything from Arkham Asylum and Arkham City to launch into the development of Origins. You couldn't ask for um, a stronger launching point, right? Um, and so it, that was a wonderful place to start from. And then from there, we were given. You know, when it comes to their own game, their own original idea, their own execution, Gotham Knights is where we have to look at to say, OK, the current team has the capability to put together a game like this with these mechanics. If these mechanics can be fleshed out and customized for Superman, is it possible to get a full fledged Superman game out of this? I think the answer is yes. The grappling mechanic to me and all of the different traversal mechanics that they made for the four different characters has been, in a sense, a source of ire for a lot of people. I see it as they spread themselves really thin for a studio that's coming up and were able to execute enough differences between four different characters in their traversal modes that made them stand out. If they were to focus on just one major character, use all of that time, all the resources and all their expertise to hone down a Superman flight system, I think they're going to be able to bring something that's actually pretty solid to the table. In fact, if I even were to go ahead and show you what we already have, that's more open source in a sense, but has a pay tier to it. There's a dynamic flight system in Unreal Engine 4's Epic Games Marketplace. This is a flight system that you can pay maybe 40 bucks for, and you can actually download it, and it already has all your games set up there. 
You can move the character around. You can fly in different directions, different angles. And it's actually already set up for you. You can actually use it to make your own game. Many of you remember when Unreal Engine brought out that new Matrix City map mode and people were making Superman games out of it. A lot of what they did was they used similar aspects of the dynamic flight system to actually make those in quote Superman games. Those were just flight systems with this character mesh on top of them. And they were able to basically showcase that. Not saying Warner Bros. Games Montreal is going to go take something from the marketplace, but we already have foundational pieces to be able to look at what's already available and eventually go ahead and start building something from there. So that's not really a problem, in my opinion. And I think that's probably one of the major aspects to actually point out that will probably make a Superman game feel like you're playing as the character. Another part, too, will be cinematics. Now, I'm not talking about story because the story of Gotham Knights, we can argue back and forth. I did not necessarily think the story was actually too strong because it's a superhero game. It's hard to surprise superhero fans. We're very dialed into the literature and a lot of the, you know, surrounding context and, you know, that surround our heroes. But when you look at the way Gotham Knights was marketed, they kept talking about their cinematic team, which is their team that's able to make a lot of the cinematics into their video games and actually allow for some kind of a fluid aspect of it. They were able to kind of put together four characters into a video game, which in my opinion, I thought that was just nuts. It didn't make the game flow cohesively like you were playing with one character, but they made it work. If any character that you picked up that you were playing with, once they got to a specific point of progression, it just kind of showed up that, you know, this character was doing their own thing and responding to the environment and responding to your progress or the scenario as best as they had done it. And all of the cutscenes were actually well done. The actors, they basically showed their quality. I mean, you can't really do anything if you're a cinematic director to be able to actually do much more than have what your actors bring to the table suffice. So they were able to do a very good job. So in terms of cinematics, in terms of a flight system, I think they've nailed those down. Now, the other layers that I think is probably going to cause maybe some arguments back and forth will be the exact style of video game. Now, are they going to be able to make an action adventure game out of this? Or is this something that they probably want to go an RPG route? I think Superman can thrive depending on which route you take and how you structure your game. An RPG version of Superman would require for me what I think is a lot of creativity in a story to be able to explain properly why Superman needs these extra aspects to probably power and level him up to make him much more of a dominant force. Superman already has a base level of power, that's for sure. So anybody that wants to make an RPG has got to tell me exactly why Superman can't punch a bad guy and send this bad guy flying all the way down, you know, through buildings. Perhaps there might be other things that Superman could use to augment those base powers that they will have to put into game mechanics. There also has to be enemy NPC diversities, uh, you know, in terms of how different enemy NPCs show up in the game. And I think Gotham Knights has a very good number of enemy NPCs in terms of the way they've been able to kind of express, you know, how the Knights were able to encounter different enemy types and different factions. I think the faction system is probably, in my opinion, going to make a whole lot of sense. Now, when I say the faction system, I'm talking about, say, maybe having so-called grunts of different kinds show up from different enemy classes or at least combining forces to fight against Superman. Maybe there'll be a faction that is tied to Lex Luthor. Maybe there's a faction that's tied to potentially Zod and some of those Kryptonians. Maybe there's a faction of meta humans that are out there that, you know, you have to deal with that kind of match up with what Superman's powers are in different aspects. So this is one way to temper down Superman's own abilities, because a lot of people say Superman is really strong. I know, but Superman also has weaknesses and has enemy types that can match his strength. In fact, if you go back even to the animated series of Superman, that was written by Paul Dini and the good old G's. You'll see that there's actually a character called Parasite who's able to drain powers from people. I've always thought that this particular character or an adaptation of the character's ability will be for or make for a solid boss to deal with Superman. So all of these different factions can have their boss, maybe Lex in some kind of a big suit that he's you know designed to fight against Superman. That's one boss. Maybe some Kryptonian. That's another boss. Maybe this metahuman. That's another boss. But then their factions 
are going to allow for things to roll smoothly. There also can be encounters outside of Earth in order for you to be able to kind of, you know, distance your character from all of those destruction mechanics that Superman can wreak on any city that he's fighting in, if you get what I mean. So when you start to layer and say, okay, how are these things going to come together? I think that what you need is a development team that's been able to ship a game, push the envelope and have solid mechanics, even though they have to do too much and put in one game. I saw somebody say, you know, I just if I couldn't handle Gotham Knight, how was it possible I'll be able to handle a game that Warner Brothers Games Montreal makes if it's a Superman game? And I said, well, th that's everybody's problem. The truth of the matter is the game was one of those broad games where if you actually try to find what the game does very well, there are actually very few things. The combat is one that I felt was solid, but that's because I think, in my opinion, they spread their wings to be able to cover different areas of development to be able to bring and ship this game as a full blown package. But at the end of the day, this is something that can actually bite, you know, somebody in the butt or a development team. So now that they've learned, hey, man, we probably don't need to be going to making four <laughs> different characters. Maybe we just need to focus on one character. And this is probably going to drive the ship exactly where I think things need to go. So when you go, when you go down and you look at things, in my opinion, I think they have what it takes. And I can talk about combat and talk about some other elements later on, but I thought I'd highlight these few things in this particular video. At risk of making the video any longer, I have to say, okay, let's go ahead and kind of put a stop to this for now. I want to hear your thoughts in the comment section. Tell me what it is that you think so far with all of the different pointers that we've made. I know some people might, you know, say maybe some other studio needs to develop it like Rocksteady and so on and so forth. And perhaps Rocksteady might have the idea or they might have, uh, you know, the goods. Or maybe Zaslav has said, hey, is Rocksteady not supposed to be working on some Superman game that's a, you know, game that follows Arkham and may have dug up the files from somewhere and they're probably going to make it. That'd be great. But what if Rocksteady is not in the running to make this game? What if they're actually going to be supporting Suicide Squad Kill the Justice League? as a live service game for the next few years after or whenever it eventually launches. Well, that leaves them occupied. And then who's going to make the Superman game? So I'm thinking Wonder Brothers Montreal based on some of the things that I've said in this video. Thanks for listening and for watching. I appreciate you guys this time and audience. Hopefully we'll talk pretty soon in another one. Peace out.